Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is how to photograph small birds. Let's take a second and talk about photographing small birds. Bird photography, we know that's hard. Birds in flight photography is hard. And then photographing small birds is hard and challenging as well. What happens when we photograph small birds is, well, they're smaller, they move faster, they flit around. They're a small target to focus on. Often we photograph them, they're in the shade. All of those things just make it more challenging to photograph them. So let's walk through how I photographed warblers and vireos and other small songbirds in Florida last week. So shutter speed is going to be one of the most important things that you can get right here. The faster your shutter speed, the easier this is going to be. You want to freeze the action of that small warbler flitting around in the trees. So bump up your ISO. Start at 800, 1600, 3200 ISO so you get a really fast shutter speed. And of course you're going to shoot wide open with your lens so you let in as much light as possible. If you get too much digital noise, well, you know, just use Topaz Denoise AI in your post-processing so that you take care of that. Don't worry about the noise. So one of the things that happens is you're going to end up shooting in mottled light. The bird's going to be in the shade, then it's going to be in the sunshine as the light filters through the leaves and the branches of the trees. So you're going to have to change your shutter speed quite often. And it doesn't really matter whether you shoot aperture priority or manual, but just get used to the fact that sometimes the bird's going to be in the shade and you're going to have to shoot wide open. You're going to make adjustments for your exposure. And then sometimes the bird's going to be in the bright light and the whites are going to be overexposed. So you're going to have to make adjustments for that. A lot of people find it hard to focus on warblers because they're so small and they take up such a small part of the frame. But practice at home before you go. Sit down in your favorite chair at home and just practice focusing on different items throughout your house just so that you get that practice and you know that if you look through the viewfinder exactly where the bird's going to show up in it. Now the other thing I do is when I'm photographing warblers, I put the autofocus point smack dab in the middle of the frame and I keep it there. I'm not worried about composition. I'm worried about getting a shot of the bird that's sharp and well exposed so then I can do something with it in post processing. If you can't just point your lens right at the bird the first time, focus on the trunk of the tree, then go out on the branches and then focus on the bird. Try to find the bird that way. Some people say shoot with both eyes open so that you are looking through the viewfinder with one eye, you're keeping the other eye open so you can see where the bird moves. That doesn't really work for me, but if you can do that, I think that's probably a, a good idea. Uh, maybe it's something that we can all practice and get better at. So I suggest that you use autofocus because it's just one less thing for you to have to think about. You're going to want to be thinking about getting a sharp image and getting a good exposure and following the bird, that's gonna be hard enough. So use autofocus, but use autofocus in an effective way. Use tap focusing. Focus on the bird continually. You know, like keep pressing the autofocus, whether you use your thumb or your index finger, it doesn't matter. But you wanna continually acquire focus on the bird because it moves around a lot. You just can't focus on the bird and then try think your autofocus system's gonna normally track it. What's gonna happen is the bird's gonna fly out of your autofocus area. Now the other thing I want you to do is concentrate on one bird at a time. So if you're photographing a yellow warbler or a yellow-throated warbler or a palm warbler and somebody yells out, pileated woodpecker, don't automatically switch to the pileated. Finish getting your shot that you're on because you've been following that bird. So concentrate one bird at a time, photograph it, and I think you'll be more successful than if you're kind of flitting around like the bird's doing. So I suggest that you use a 400 to a 600 millimeter lens. Try to use the fastest lens you can. Use the fastest aperture that you can. So a 400 f4, f5, 6, a 600 f4 lens would work great. I shot at 600 millimeters with f4 when I was doing this. I took the teleconverter off because if you take the teleconverters off, the lens just focuses faster that way. You're letting in more light. You can have a faster shutter speed. You can keep your ISO down low. The lens that you choose to use makes a difference. Try to shoot wide open at f4 if at all possible. One more camera setting is to turn the beeper off. You don't want to be acquiring focus and have your camera continuing to beep. That might scare the birds away, so turn the beep off so you don't have to worry about scaring the birds away. Now one thing you can do is you can use fill flash. And this will help. It'll put a gleam in the eye if you're photographing birds and they're in the shade. So set your camera to manual. Set your camera exposure to the ambient exposure that you have for that day. 
and then with your flash unit turn it to ETTL or TTL so it's through the lens metering turn it to high speed sync so you want to be in high speed sync mode and then turn the flash compensation to minus three if you shoot at minus three exposure compensation on the flash unit it's putting out less power so the batteries will last longer it's also just going to lighten the bird a little bit you're not going to overexpose the whites and also ethically it's just a little bit better for the birds too to make sure that I do this right, I've got to tell you that there's one hazard to doing that and it's called warbler neck. If you're looking up all the times at the birds and you're scoping them out and you're going to have your head back, you're looking up at the bottom into the tree leaves, you're going to get warbler neck after a while. So at the end of the day, if you've got a sore neck, a sore upper back, sore shoulders, you have a warbler neck and that's from staring at the underside of those tree leaves, getting those pictures of those warblers. So just be careful for that. If you want to learn more about bird photography and take better bird photos, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future tutorials. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.